this is a game that can be used by students to practice identifying prime numbers between 1 to 1000. The computer will generate a random prime number for the user to guess and inform the user if the number entered is too big or too small. This game is built entirely by ChatGPT 3.5 on the programming languages of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. It's based only on the prompts given by the designer of the game without any code input from the human. In this video, I shall demonstrate the entire workflow which can also be used to design other applications for use either online or offline as well as um, embedding into the Singapore student learning space. When writing the prompts for ChatGPT, first, write down the main purpose of the application. Then, write down in a sequential order the requirements of the application. In this example, I listed some of the expected behavior of the game. Wait for ChatGPT to generate the codes. If you understand the programming language, you can try to make sense of it or to edit it. If ChatGPT separates the HTML, JavaScript and CSS codes, prompt it to put all the codes in a single page for simplicity. We shall therefore restrict our app to just one page for starters. Next, open any text editor. For Windows machines, you can use the native WordPad software. For Mac users, you can use TextEdit. Copy the codes from ChatGPT and paste them into the text editor. Make sure that you are pasting plain text. When saving the file, label it as index.html. For WordPad users, ensure that you are saving as the file type text document. Remember to include the file extension HTML. You can give it any other name, but use index as the name if you want it to work within SLS. Now, Navigate to where you save the file and right-click the index.html file to open it in a browser such as Chrome. Test the functions of the app. In this case, we find that the game is not working as expected. It's merely telling us if the number entered is a prime number or not. Therefore, I needed to make it clearer to ChatGPT. So I told ChatGPT what the bug is and clarified that there must be a randomly selected prime number for the user to guess. I also reiterated that there should be a response from the computer to inform the user whether the number is too big or too small. I went through a couple more iterations. First, I had to remind ChatGPT to inform the user if the guess is not a prime number. After pasting and saving the codes into the index file, I tested it again. This time, it is able to generate a prime number. However, I slowly discovered that the prime number generated changes with each guess, so the user is not able to make use of prior guesses to narrow down the possibilities. So I went back to ChatGPT to inform it of the bug. After another iteration, the game is working properly. Only now do I ask ChatGPT to beautify the app. I want to include some CSS styles to improve the aesthetics, as well as to make the list of guesses run vertically. When I'm satisfied with the app, I will either host it on a free web host such as GitHub, or Amazon Web Services S3 buckets for students to access via a web link. Please refer to the links in the comments below. I can also open the index file directly from my computer and use it in class with a projector. If I want to include it as part of an SLS package, I would compress the index file in a zip folder. 
If there are any media files like pictures, videos or audio files, I can include them in the zip file as well. The zip folder can be uploaded as a file from your device. It will load in the SLS lesson. Do note that these apps that are embedded into SLS are standalone apps that do not receive any data from SLS, nor does it transmit data like scores and answers to SLS for storage. When the user refreshes the window or closes the browser, the data stored temporarily in the app is lost. However, the app still remains as an assessment for learning tool that can be quite engaging for students. Now that you've seen how a simple game like this is done, you can try your hand at creating other apps such as games, interactive graphs, simulations and so on. For more ideas, visit my blog at physicslens.com which I'll try to update with more applications.